Welcome back to Zion's Redemption Radio Network. Today we're going to be covering Blacks in the Priesthood, part two of chapter 13 of the the church and the gospel. And we'll be starting on page 200 with the seed of Cain. The seed of Cain. Enoch was a man endowed with the power of God, for we could we read that he could speak the word of the Lord, and the earth trembled, or he could turn rivers of water out of their course, or make the mountains fall before him. See, and the reason why he was able to do this is because he had the fullness of the priesthood. He is one of the the ones who are mighty and strong before the Lord of the whole earth, as I explained in the last episode. Yet when he preached the word of the Lord, he went forth among all the people, save it were the people of Canaan. People saw that the people Enoch saw that the people were a mixture of all the seed of Adam, save it were, were it was the seed of Cain. For the seed of Cain were black and had not place among them. Those who were less valiant in the pre-existence and who thereby had certain spiritual restrictions imposed upon them during mortality are known to us as the Negro or the African American people. Now, I think that there is some... I know that there is a division, in, even in Africa, of different levels of, of those who are of the seed of Cain. So, let me explain this real quick. Ham had three or four sons. Ham was the son of Noah, and he took himself a wife who was Egyptus. Egyptus was of the seed of Cain. This is how uh, the black people of Africa came through the flood. Ham and Egyptus had four sons. One of the sons was named Canaan. Those who are the descendants of Canaan were those who, at the last moments in the war in heaven, came over to the side of the plan of salvation. The other sons of Egyptus and Ham, they held on for a, a, quite a while, but they were not the last. So the, the ones who received the least blessings of the African people are the seed of Canaan. In Genesis chapter 9, um, Noah curses the seed of Canaan to be a servant of servants to Japheth and to Shem. Okay, this is the curse that is upon them. And why is this curse placed upon them? It is because they were the ones who wanted the plan of damnation, who did not want to work to gain the experiences that they needed They just wanted it handed to them, which was the plan of damnation. The the plan of damnation um, put forth by Lucifer in order to overthrow the kingdom of heaven and try to take the spot of Jesus as the Redeemer was that I'm going to make it so that everybody gets back. But it is a plan of damnation. There is no growth in this plan. And those who are of Canaan were those who wanted it more than anybody else. But they saw that they were going to lose, so they they came over to the plan of salvation. But because of what they they did in rebelling against the plan of salvation and God, God allowed them to come upon the earth in mortality, but he would not allow them to have priesthood blessings, to have the priesthood. But there's different levels, like I said. So uh, Ham and Egyptus had more than just one son. And the curse, the, the greatest of all cursings, was upon Canaan only, not the other sons who are also black, 
who are the other uh, tribes of Africa and uh, tribes uh, that eventually made their way into Australia and into Fiji and those type of places, they are not Canaanites. Not all Africans are Canaanites from, from the lineage of Canaan. But all Africans are of the lineage of Cain. But there are different divisions even among they, uh, e- even among them. So continuing on, and this is what God has shown me, and I am unapologetic about it. Now, I do want to say that some of the best people I have ever known were refugees from Africa. I had a really good friend. His name was too hard to pronounce, so we just called him Guy. But he was uh, a Kenyan who was in the refugee camps, and he was able to make it to the United States. One of the cool things about my life, being in Job Corps, we were in a pl- I was in a place where the government of the United States of America would send refugees to, so they could gain. Um, they would come into this country legally. They were able to gain trades and professions and education in Job Corps. And this is where I was when I was uh, 16. No, I was 17, 18. uh, Let me think. I was there for a year and a half. So, yeah, I went in when I was 17 and I was there for a year and a half. Not long before my... uh, 19th birthday, I think. So anyway, um, so I got to know refugees from around the world. Vietnamese refugees, some of the funniest people I've ever met. Um, in fact, one of the, and I know I'm not talking about Guy, but Guy was awesome, okay? But he was a black African. He was a lovely person. Um... And I'm not going to talk about the Vietnamese roommates that I had that were refugees as well, the Nugens. <laughs> I could say so much. But um, but what I want to say is just because um, they are African doesn't mean you're... Um, I, love, I love what Martin Luther King says. You judge people according to the content of the, their character, not, not according to their skin. And we should. Now, there are things that uh, certain individuals, they don't qualify. It's like I said, I qualify to be a crude hauler. Uh, Certain people don't qualify for that. There are pilots out there who qualify to fly 747s. Others of us don't qualify. There are those who qualify to be the elect of God. Others have not qualified for that in the pre-existence. So though there are those of Shem who they are the elect of God, many more are Japheth. They did not qualify to come into the house of Shem, other than by the law of adoption, which was opened up in this last dispensation uh, and in the, the previous dispensation. Eventually, the house of Canaan and the house of Cain will qualify to gain certain blessings, which they do not now qualify for. If they do good, they will be blessed for what they have done. And eventually they will gain the blessings, um, the highest blessings that they are allowed to gain by God. Okay. I'll just put it that way. But it doesn't mean we are all children of God. All of us. Every single one of us are children of God. And we should not treat each other different. Or look down upon each other. Because we're all in this together. We're all growing. We're all put into our stations in life. Um... And this was all planned out. It's, none of this was by accident. Some people, like I said, are the elect of God and they're homeless. There are those who are not the elect of God who are rich beyond 
your or our wildest imaginations. There are those who are not of the house of Japheth or Shem who have great lives, and there are those among all of us, all uh, Shem, Japheth, and Cain, Canaan, who are, or Ham, actually, who have different lives. We all have different lives, okay? We should be helping each other to gain, like, to come to God. God is no respecter of persons, and we can all receive revelation from him, but there are those who qualified to do certain things which others have not qualified for. Okay. And I hate this topic, but it has to be taught. So, Such spirits are sent to earth through the lineage of Cain. The mark put upon him for his rebellion against God was for his rebellion against God. And that is Bruce R. McConkie, who was an apostle in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, that is in his book, Mormon Doctrine, pages 246 and 247. So we're on page 201. Also, I just have to say this, just because they knew a little bit about it, like Bruce or McConkie or Brigham Young or whoever, doesn't mean they understood it all completely. Joseph Smith didn't even understand these things all completely in his lifetime. Part of the reason why God tells us not to trust in the flesh is because there are people who are um, who are given certain things, and it doesn't mean that they understand everything completely. Even myself, I've been shown a lot of stuff, and sometimes it's hard for me to talk about. And sometimes I've been shown things, and I don't even understand it completely, and I might misspeak. Okay, that's why I tell you don't. Just trust it because I said it. If if you really want to know about this topic, and you don't have to, but if you really want to know about this topic, you go to God and you ask. Part of the reason why I've been given more is because I've asked more, but I don't understand it fully, and I don't know that I care to. What my um, interests are is to understand God. To understand Zion's redemption, to come in back into His presence. Okay, but I do need to know a little bit about this because um, I need to know who I should give priesthood to, for one. But there's more to it than that. Okay, so I I got to go off on this little tangent. I will give priesthood to whom God tells me to give priesthood to. I will get revelation before I give priesthood. And just because you are of a certain skin color doesn't mean I'm going to give you priesthood. Because there are many people who are white, who are as black as dark pitch in their soul. There are many people who are brown and dark brown and even black. Like my friend Guy, he was as black as they come. But I could feel his spirit. He was a good man. He went through some horrible things. He was the only survivor in his family. He was a small child when uh, when there was a war in Kenya and he was hiding under the bed when his mom and dad and brothers and sisters were murdered. And he survived. They didn't find him. If they would have found him, it didn't matter that he was a young child. They would have killed him too. He was raised in the refugee camps and he went through some horrible experiences but that man I could feel the light within him and he was one of my my great friends I've lost contact with him I don't know what happened to him I haven't seen him since 2000 
think it was around 2010 when I lost contact with him. But but he was black, as black as pitch. But his soul was not black as pitch. There are men who I have met, murderers. I have seen, I've watched people killed in front of me. I've been in some really horrible situations. I've survived things which I just, I don't even want to think about some of the things that I've seen. I have been around some of, in the flesh, the most wicked people. And I know not the most wicked people on the planet, but some really bad people. And I could feel their spirit. And though they had white skin, they were as evil as they come. So I'm not going to judge people based upon their skin color. But there is a segregation of people based upon skin color, even among Africa. There is a segregation of the Canaanites and the other of the children of Ham and their posterity. All right. Oh, I hate this topic. All right. So when pl- when he placed God mark uh, placed the mark of Cain upon Cain, he engaged in segregation. When he told Enoch not to preach the gospel to the descendants of Cain who were black, Jehovah engaged in segregation. When he cursed the descendants of Cain as to the priesthood, Jehovah engaged in segregation. When he forbade intermarriage, when Jehovah forbade intermarriage, as he does in Deuteronomy chapter 7, he established segregation. When Jehovah segregated the people both as to the blood and place of residence, at least in the cases of the Lamanites and the Africans, we have a, the definite word of Jehovah himself that he placed a dark skin on them as a curse and a punishment and as a sign to all others. He forbade intermarriage with them under the threat of, of extension of the curse. So that's in Second Nephi chapter 5, verse 21. So what that is, is when you intermarry with these individuals and you interbreed with them, the curse is upon your posterity. Now, okay, one of the worst things that the elect of God can do, especially a female, Every single female out there has children who she has made covenants with in the pre-existence. Now, because of physical defects upon this earth and because of things that are out of her control, some women cannot have children in this time period of this earth. But they will have them in the millennium. Okay? You, if you have not had your children, either they will be given to another or you, if you if you remain the elect and you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to have the opportunity to raise your children up in the millennium. Okay, now this is another hard subject for me to talk about. But there is an individual, actually there's a couple individuals in my family both on my wife's side and on my side, where these women who are the elect of God have chosen to marry or intermarry with African people. And their children come out dark-skinned, black, or dark brown. Now, I know who they are, even though they have black skin, that they were, they, they made covenants with their mother and that they are the elect of God. They're still the elect, but their mother chose to allow somebody to be the father who was not an elect. Now, Gentile, the elect of 
The women of the elect of God can do this with Gentiles too. This is why polygamy is important. But these children come down through the womb of their mother and they come out with a curse upon them. This is a bad thing, okay? And I know, oh my gosh, I'm going to get canceled for this. But you know what? I've got to say it. These elect children of God are cursed because of their fathers and because of the mother's decisions to intermarry with the cursed race of Ham. Now, it's just as bad, not quite as bad with Gentiles, with the elect of God um, taking themselves husbands who are Gentiles, that's bad in and of itself, but but the curse of Cain is placed upon these babies who were the elect in the spirit. And that's why there was uh, a segregation or um, a prohibition on intermarriage. Um, even even among the ch- uh, children of Israel in, in in ancient times, the children of Israel were not to marry among the, the nations of the earth, especially the women. The men could, because the men don't have children who are assigned to them, they could father the Gentile, uh, women from Gentile nations and bring them into the house of Israel and they would be adopted in to a point. But to bring or uh, to allow the, the females to be impregnated by the Gentiles was a horrible taboo. You lost your place. Your children were called bastards. They they were they lost their place among the Israelites. Um, the Samaritans were among those who were like that. They have a lineage of of Jacob, but they intermingled men and women fully with the Gentiles. Okay. When when the elect of God intermingle with the cursed race of Ham. And Cain and Cain, uh, Canaan, the elect children come down through the matrix of the mother, and the curse is upon them, and they did nothing to deserve that curse. It is a, is a decision that the mother made, and the curse comes upon the elect of God. Okay. Now, this this chapter, I wish I could just breeze through it. There's so much I have to talk about, and I don't want to do it, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. So I don't skip I don't skip chapters, even when they're hard to talk about. And like I said, we don't have the right to, to treat people badly. They don't have the right to grab our blessings, but we don't have the right to treat them badly. As far as I'm concerned, I do want equality among the races. That if they work and they they work for what for the blessings, they should have the blessings. If if somebody wants to be a pilot and they're able to go to uh, aviation school and to work their way up to, I don't care that they fly 747s. Okay, if they go to CDL school and they put the time in and they gain the experience, I don't care if they work next to me, whether they are black, white, or brown. We can haul oil together. They can have the blessings and the privileges that come with the the work that, that we do. Like I have a really good paycheck. If I worked a normal schedule and I hauled two loads a day, if 
five days a week and took two days off like most people in most uh, most places, I'd be making by myself around $143,000 a year. Now, I choose to work a four-on-four-off schedule because I've been driving for 30 years and my body's beat up and I actually need the time to recover before I can go back and do work. Like, if I worked five on and took two days off, I would be just recovering, starting to recover by the time I went back to work. So I don't do that. But if I, if I you know, and, and my job's not that hard, it's just the vibrations in the truck and the turns and everything, all the stresses that are put on my body with the fact that over the course of the last 30 years, uh, with the exception of my mission, I have been a truck driver. All of the accumulative uh, stresses and injuries that I have, uh, I have gained or obtained in these last 30 years, like it has a cumulative effect upon my body. But I, I do gain a great blessing from having the experience and being able to haul the crude oil that I haul, because even though I work only half a year, because I work four on and four off, I still have a great blessing given to me because of the experience that I've gained in this profession. Okay. Let's get back to this reading. Oh, I don't want to read this. I don't like reading this, but oh, he certainly segregated the descendants of Cain when he was cur- when he cursed the African as to the priesthood and drew an absolute line. You may even say he dropped an iron curtain there. The African was cursed as to the priesthood and therefore was cursed as to the blessings of the priesthood. Certainly God made a segregation there, and that's right race problems, um Marky Peterson, BYU, 1954. So that that's basically off the same talk that he was talking about before. Abraham talks of a Pharaoh who was probably one of the most righteous descendants of Ham, the son of Noah. So Noah and Egyptus had a child, and that child was the first Pharaoh. He established a very righteous government, but had certain restrictions placed upon him. Now, the first government of Egypt was established by Pharaoh, the eldest son of Egyptus, who was, who was um, the wife of Ham, the daughter of Ham. Oh, wait, let me think. Anyway, um, I think there's a typo here. Now, the first government of Egypt was established by Pharaoh, the eldest son of Egyptus, the daughter of Ham. And it was after the manner of the government of Ham, which was patriarchal. Okay, so uh, Egyptus was the wife of Ham, not the daughter of Ham. Anyway, Pharaoh, being a righteous man, established his kingdom and judged his people wisely and justly all his days. So this is a descendant of Cain. Seeking earnestly to initiate the, that order established by the fathers in the first generation, in the days of the first patriarchal reign, and even in the reign of Adam and also of Noah, his father who blessed him with the blessings of the earth and with the blessings of wisdom, but cursed him as pertaining to the priesthood. We're on page 202 at 23%. Now, Pharaoh, being of that lineage by which he could not have the right of priesthood, notwithstanding the Pharaohs would fain claim it from Noah through Ham, Therefore, my father was led astray by their idolatry. So that's in Abraham chapter 1, verse, verses 25 through 27. So basically, um, a pharaoh couldn't have the priesthood, but they claimed to have the priesthood through him and Noah. 
And there's actually a whole bunch of stories that are really interesting on this topic as well that I'm not going to get into in this podcast. But, uh, yeah, it, it has to do with, um, with the coat that God made for Adam and Pharaoh and him and stealing that. And uh, it's just, it's interesting. Uh, anyway, um, not really important for the redemption of Zion, I don't think, or for Zion's redemption or whatever. I don't, or for salvation or any of that, but interesting stuff. Anyway, Noah blessed this Pharaoh with blessings of the earth because he judged his people wisely and justly. He was a righteous man and he intimidated the order of, of his kingdom after the righteous order of Adam. In spite of all these virtuous qualities and the character of that Pharaoh, Nero, Noah, still cursed him as pertaining to the priesthood. And why was that? It was because of who he was before he came to this earth. The explanation was that that Pharaoh was of that lineage by which he could not have the right of priesthood. Segregation in this dispensation. So, wow. I'm going to take a break, and we're going to talk about segregation in this dispensation when I come back. I'll be back in two seconds. Okay. Segregation in this dispensation. God's efforts to segregate and gather the house of Israel have continued in this dispensation of the fullness of times. Joseph Smith felt strongly about this and expressed his feelings as to the saints on several occasions. For example, on January 2nd, 1843, Joseph went to a Mr. Sellers with Elder Hyde and Richards. Elder Hyde inquired about the situation of the African. And they're not saying African. I'm just using it because that's the age that we live in. All right. And the prophet answered him, quote, I had anything to do with, had I anything to do with the African, I would confine him, confine them by strict law to their own species and put them on a national equalization. So that was Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 270. So Joseph Smith's a prophet and he's saying that he would, he would uh, confine them to their own people but he would make them equal. So Joseph Smith, what he wanted to do, and this would have been the greatest blessing that this land could have had if if they would have accepted Joseph Smith uh, for his presidential bid and not assassinated him. By the way, Joseph Smith was the first person who was um, running for president who was ever killed in this country. Who was assassinated in this country. All right. Now what did Joseph Smith want to do? He wanted to sell land to individuals and use that money to buy up all of the slaves in this country and send them back to their country. If that would have happened, you wouldn't see the race riots and the race wars. There wouldn't be so much racism in this country, Uh, at least not outright racism. There would probably still be racism because people would be like, oh, I'm going to Africa. But they would, the Africans who were slaves in this country would have been sent back to their own country, to their native land. It would have been better for everyone. And there would have been segregation between the continents okay which is a natural segregation and i'm not even going to talk about the stupid european whites that went into africa like they should have just left them alone and let them be their own people in my opinion maybe that's bad for me to say but you know and like i don't like i i know people can get mad at me because i'm a white nationalist colonizer but I don't agree that we should colonize Africa. (laughs) We should have let them be their own people. 
and have their own nations and stayed out of Africa, in my opinion. Okay. And a year later, January of 1844, the prophet Joseph Smith, as mayor of Nauvoo, fined two Africans for attempting to marry a white woman. Doctrinal History of the Church, Volume 6, page 210. The prophet also explained, quote, that the curse is not yet taken off the sons of Canaan, neither will be until, until it is affected by as great power as caused it to come. So we're on page 203 at 28%. And the people who interf- are in, interfere with the least of the purposes of God in this matter will con- come under the least com- a condemnation before him. And that's Messenger and Advocate, Volume 2, page 290. Also, Doctrinal History of the Church, Volume 2, page 438. So, Joseph Smith is a no-go on intermarriage between the Africans and the elect of God. Period. End of story. Even from Japheth to Canaan. Intermarriage is is not something that he uh, advocated, all right? And there's good reason for it. Here is evidence that the curse is exemplified through a black skin and that when the curse is removed, then the dark skin will be removed by as great a power as caused it to come. So God is the one that gave that curse. And they'll say it's Noah, but it's God that gave that that curse. God is the only one that can take the curse from them. Not even Noah could take the curse from them. It has to be the Father. Also a part that of that curse was the restriction of priesthood. Abraham O. Smoot inquired of the prophet Joseph Smith what should be done with the Africans in the South as I was preaching to them. Joseph said, I could baptize them by the consent of their masters, but not to confer the priesthood upon them. And that comes from the John L. uh, L. John Nuttall Journal, May 31st of 1879. He writes that down uh, as a recollection. So it's a third-hand account. Okay. Teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, though, that's not a third-hand account. All right, details of the account are available from another source. Um, Brother A. O. Smoot said W.W. Patent, Warren Parrish, and Thomas B. Marsh were laboring in the southern states in 1835 and 1836. There were Negroes who made application for baptism, and the question arose with them whether Negroes were entitled to hold the priesthood. And by those brethren, it was decided they would not confer the priesthood until they had consulted with the prophet Joseph, and subsequently they communicated with him. So they they could baptize, especially free blacks in the South, they could baptize them, but they could not give the priesthood to them. His decision, as I understood it, was they were not entitled to the priesthood, nor yet to be baptized without the consent of their masters. So free blacks could, but slaves could not. In after years, when I became acquainted with Joseph myself in Far West, about the year 1838, I received from Brother Joseph subsequently the same instructions. It was on my application to him what should be done with the Negro in the South. As I was preaching to them, he said I could baptize them by by the consent of their masters, but not to confer priesthood upon them. So we're on page 204 at 34%, and that comes from the church and the Negroid people, as quoted in Mormonism and the Negro by Stuart, page 11. It has been reported that a black man by the name of Elijah Abel was ordained to the priesthood by Zebedee Coltrane on March 3rd, 1836. Okay, so a lot of people bring this up, um, and we'll talk about it, but Elijah Abel, Abel he was uh, 
he almost looked like he was white. Okay, but he had the blood of the seed of Cain in him. Um, John Taylor thought that perhaps Elijah had received the priesthood before the word of the Lord was fully understood and that it had been one of the mistakes of the early church, uh, of early church history. See minutes of the Council of Twelve, June 4th, 1879. The Council minutes of August 26th, 1908 states that this ordination was de- declared null and void by the prophet Joseph Smith himself. In 1879, Zebedee Coltrin related to a small group of priesthood leaders that Brother Joseph had told him in 1834 that the Spirit of the Lord say, saith that the Negro has no right, nor cannot hold the priesthood. And that comes from the L. John Nuttall Journal, Volume 1, page 273. The Salt Lake Tribune reported in an article on the 26th of October, 1970, that the prophet Joseph Smith was commanded by God to withdraw the priesthood from Elijah Abel and to revoke the ordinations. So even though Elijah had only a very small percentage of Negro blood, and he he wasn't even, he was, he didn't look like he had any, but he was, he did have, a, uh, he did have Negro blood in him. He was still not supposed to have the priesthood. He did go on an LDS mission in 1883, but there was no record of his performing any priesthood ordinance work. Brigham Young made some very forceful statements concerning the status of the black race and the priesthood. And this is uh, Brigham Young. We know there is a portion of the inhabitants of the earth who dwell in Asia that are Negroes and said to be Jews. The blood of Judah has not only mingled almost with all nations, but also with the blood of Cain. And we're on page 205 at 40%. They have mingled their seed together. These Negro Jews may keep up all of the outer ordinances of the Jewish religion, They may have their sacrifices and they may perform all the religious ceremonies any people on earth could perform. But let me tell you that the day they consent to mingle their seed with Canaan, the priesthood was taken away from Judah. So that's that second priesthood I was talking about. Uh, That's not the Levitical priesthood. And that portion of Judah's seed will never get any rule or blessings of the priesthood until Cain gets it. Let this church, which is called the kingdom of God on the earth, we will summon the first presidency, the 12, the high council, the bishop, Rick, and all elders of Israel, and suppose we summon them to appear here, to appear here and here declare that it is right to mingle our seed with the black race of Cain, that they shall come in with us and be partakers with us of all the blessings of God has given to us, which means the endowments, the priesthood, the washings and the anointings, and uh, intermingling and having children one with another. On that very day and hour that we should do so, the priesthood is taken from this church and kingdom at and kingdom and God leaves us to our fate. So that's what happens. Like this is serious, serious stuff. Like I said before, if if one of the elect daughters of God who has made covenants with other elect children of God to come through the matrix of her womb does so by intermingling with the curse the elect children of God are cursed. And this is done by no fault of their own. It's a big deal. The priesthood is taken from this church and kingdom and God leaves us to our fate. The moment we consent to mingle with the seed of Cain, the church must go to destruction. We should receive the curse which has been placed upon the seed of Cain and never more be numbered with the children of Adam 
who are heirs to the priesthood until that curse be removed. That the Gentiles are doing what the Gentiles are doing, we are consenting to do. What we are trying to do today is to make the make the Negro equal with us in all of our privileges. My voice shall be against it all the day long. I shall not consent for one moment. I will call them to counsel. I say I will not consent for one moment for you to lay a plan to bring a curse upon this people. It shall not be while I am here. And that's Brigham Young and his address. Oh, let's see here. Which is uh, his address of February 5th, 1852. is located in the LDS Church Historical Department, Salt Lake City, Utah. Also in the teachings of Brigham Young by Fred Collier. It's compiled by Fred Collier. Uh, pages 45 and 46. Brigham did state, did state, however, that the time would come when the blacks would have the chance to receive the priesthood. And we're on page 206 at 47%. When all the other children of Adam have had the privilege of receiving the priesthood and of coming into the kingdom of God and of being redeemed from the four quarters of the earth and have received their resurrection from the dead, then it will be time enough to remove the curse of Cain and um, to remove the curse from Cain and his posterity. Journal of Discourses, Volume 2, page 142 and 143. And that's part of the reason why uh, the LDS Church does not want you to read the Journal of Discourses, because they don't want any of these things talked about among the people of the church. All right. Um, They can never hold the priesthood or share it in it until all the other descendants of Adam have received the promises and enjoyed the blessings of the priesthood and the keys thereof. That's Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 7, page 290. When the residue of the family of Adam come up and receive their blessings, then the curse will be removed from the seed of Cain. Journal of Discourses, Volume 7, page 291. That's Brigham Young. When the rest of the children have received their blessings in the the holy priesthood, then that curse will be removed from the seed of Cain. Journal of Discourses, volume 11, page 272. All right, so we're at 50%, and uh, I'm going to uh, make a part three. And I know this is a hard subject. I don't like talking about this. I know you guys probably don't like hearing about it. I know this is going to upset a lot of people. Um, And it's because of the culture of our time. But there are things which are true, which are hard for our, our, this generation to hear. And uh, yeah. So when we come back, um, I will be, starting pressure from without and from within. So thank you for listening. Take care, everyone. God bless and goodbye. climbing Mount McKinley. So to entertain myself, I go to chumbacasino.com. At Chumba Casino, I can play hundreds of online casino-style games for free, like online slots, bingo, slingo, and more. Plus, I get a daily login bonus. It's just too bad that up here, I don't have anyone to share my excitement with. Woohoo! Woohoo! 
Chumba. Live the Chumba life. Anytime, anywhere. Play for free now at ChumbaCasino.com. VGW Group. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome back to Zion's Redemption Radio Network. Tidbit to today we're going to be covering chapter, th- or well, part one of chapter 13 of the Church and the Gospel, starting on page 198. The title of the chapter is Blacks and the Priesthood. We'll get right into the reading after we dedicate the program. O God, the Eternal Father, we humble ourselves before Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ. We ask Thee, Father, to forgive us of our sins and our transgressions, that we might have Thy Spirit to be with us more fully as we cover this difficult topic of blacks in the priesthood. We know that These things might be triggering for many people, and we desire to understand thy will concerning this topic, as that scripture is not for private interpretation, but we should seek thine interpretation and confirmation of the Holy Spirit to know the truth. We know that you are no respecter of persons, and that you desire that we all come unto thee personally and individually to receive revelation and inspiration upon all that you have to offer us. Help us to understand the restoration of this topic. Father, we love thee and we love thy children. We are thankful, Father, that you sent thy Son, even Jesus Christ, or Yahshua or Mashiach, our Messiah, to redeem us from the fall of this cursed and fallen world. We desire to be tools in thine hand to bring about Zion's redemption on the earth, that thy kingdom on earth would join with thy kingdom above. We love thee, Father, and we ask for thy blessings to be upon us as we dedicate this time unto thee and do so in the name of Messiah. Amen. Blacks in the Priesthood Part 1 of Chapter 13 of The Church and the Gospel Pages 198 to 214 The Preexistence An individual right to bear the priesthood in this life was determined by experiences that occurred in the pre-existence. According to Joseph Smith, quote, Every man who has a calling to minister to the inhabitants of the world was ordained to that very purpose in the grand council of heaven before this world was. I suppose I was ordained to that very office in that grand council. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 365. He was. He was ordained to become the Elias to bring in this last dispensation of the fullness of times to lay the foundation for the redemption of Zion. He had the ability to bring it in full if the people were obedient. Unfortunately, the people were not obedient, and the restoration was put on hold for a time. 
the fullness of the restoration has not come into full effect among the inhabitants of those who accept Joseph Smith as a prophet of the restoration. That's partly why God calls his remnant out from among the four corners of the earth to prepare them to be the remnant who will redeem Zion. They will be given the fullness of the priesthood. They will be given the fullness of the doctrines. They will be taught the things which have been kept hidden from before the foundation of this world. Continuing on, God told Abraham that he was among those that were appointed to be the rulers and that he was chosen before Thou was, that thou was, he was chosen before he was born. Abraham chapter 3, verse 23. Other spirits were given certain appointments, gifts and callings, but not necessarily pertaining to the priesthood, as they did not qualify there, neither do they qualify here. And even among those who were given that responsibility, only a relative f- few were who faithful and truly magnify that priesthood. So real quick, all of those 